From Esther Baptist Church on Witcher Creek, it's preaching time with Pastor Randy Wilson. If you do that, it'll slow down the sinning against God. Right. Amen. 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 I, uh, I've been memorizing the scripture for 40 years. Uh, and I know some, I know some, I don't guess you call them tricks, but aids to memorizing the scripture. This is just me talking to you. Uh, You have, uh, if you're like me, you have two sets of memorization. You have one that works on on your mind where you know the scripture. But then to get it from your mind to your tongue, you've got to do that. In other words, if you just try to memorize it, I'm going to memorize this verse, you hath he quickened who were dead in trespassing and sin, for in time past you walked according to court, you know. And, and, and I'm trying to memorize that verse. If I just think that over in my head and think that over my head, I'll learn it in my head. But then when I get up here, yeah. Amen. Amen. so at home, amen, at home, say that scripture out loud. And it will help you to memorize it. Right. Same way in the, in the class back there. It will help you. But I think, I think the greatest aid to memorizing the Bible is wanting to. Yeah. Amen. Most people say, well, I could do it. Yeah. Right. And they don't try. Right. If you'll try, God will help you. Yeah. I ought to have preached on that, oughtn't I? But I'm not. I'm preaching on something else. Good to see Brother Ernie and his family yeah, here. Amen. We thank the Lord for them and uh, praying for them this week and for Ernie's mama, and she's doing better. Thank the Lord for that. I want to say uh, hello to the folks watching by the uh, stream. And I hope that it's a blessing to you. You get something that will encourage you in life, the, the, uh, the road serving the Lord. All right, it's preaching time. Amen. If you got your Bibles, you want to follow along with us, in Ephesians chapter number 1, Ephesians chapter number 1, start reading there at verse number 1, Ephesians chapter number 1, verse number 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Our Heavenly Father, thank you today for this privilege to preach. What a blessing to be in your house and have a job of telling other people, oh Lord, where we got the bread of life. Father, we were just beggars. And Lord, we found that there was supply enough for us and supply enough for other people. Help us to tell them of the wonderful grace of God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to take for a text This idea out of verse number 6. It says there that it's to the praise of the glory of God. It's the praise of the grace of God. Wherein he hath made us accepted. I want to 
get that little word, acceptance. That's great. Accepted by God. God has accepted me. I'm no longer an outcast. I'm no longer a stranger. I've been adopted and my name's written down and I'm an heir to a mansion. I'm accepted in the beloved. You know, there's a lot of things I can't get accepted in. Uh, There's some special clubs that wouldn't accept me, uh, amen, because of my background. Uh, Those that that, uh, are accepted are allowed to go in and those that are not accepted are uh, shut out. I don't believe that the gates of glory are shut out. I don't believe they're locked. But if you could, outside of the gates of glory, there are dogs and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. That They're all outside the gate because they're not accepted. You see, you've got to be accepted. Before you can get into Sam's, you've got to show your ID, don't you? If you don't have that, you're not accepted. Many years ago, I'll be way, way too... I don't even know why the Lord gave me this, but I was thinking about this many years ago. Back in the 1950s, they used to have a, a program on the black and white television called the Hit Parade. And on that hit parade, they had uh, uh, two songs that seemed to come to my mind, real spiritual songs. One of them was called Hernando's Hideaway. And the for I'll educate you. It said, I know a dark, secluded place where you can go and hide your face. Oh, help me mind. To gain entrance, you knock three times and whisper Joe's in. That's how you got in. Along about the same time, there was a a song that come out called The Green Door. And behind the green door, there was this eyeball peeking through a smoky cloud. And I said Joe sent me and someone laughed out loud. What are you saying, preacher? I'm just simply saying that we perceive the idea that if we're going to be accepted, we've got to know the password. Believe it or not, I belonged to the United Mine Workers of America at one time. Local 340, if you will. I went there to Cedar Grove to the union hall. Don't look at me like that. You say, well, I thought you was a boss. Well, you've got to work in the union before you can get to be a boss. And they had a password. Am I telling that right? And if you didn't know the password, you wasn't allowed in. If we don't know the password, uh, we're not allowed in. I won't tell you that I know the password. (laughs) What could wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The password to heaven is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The reason given for our acceptance in this verse of Scripture, the reason given is for the praise of the glory of His grace. Hallelujah. That does away with all of mankind's works and effort. The reason we're accepted is to the praise of the glory of His grace. It's not because you wear your hair a certain way. It's not because you dress a certain way. It's not because you've got a row of Sunday school pins as long as your arm. It's to the praise of the glory of His guy. It's a special privilege to be accepted in the family of God. I'm glad that I'm accepted tonight. An angel appeared unto the Virgin Mary, and I'm really going to blow you out this Christmas time. Preacher, do you not believe in the virgin birth? I do. I believe in the virgin birth. But I want to tell you this. uh, It it said to her, uh, when the angel appeared, it said unto her, Thou art highly favored. God's accepted you. You're you're accepted. But I want to say this. It was not on the grounds that she was a virgin. 
There's a lot of virgins around in Israel in that day. It wasn't on the grounds that she was, amen. It was simply the grounds of the grace of God, amen, that allowed the Virgin Mary to be a virgin. Had he not intervened and protected her, she'd have lost her virginity a long time ago. So I believe in the virgin birth, don't get me wrong, but I don't believe that makes her special. I don't think we have to bow down to Mary. I believe that the only one we bow to is the Lord Jesus Christ, and she was accepted because of the grace of God. Ephesians 1, 6 made us accepted. Now our sins actually make us unacceptable to God and we're born sinners. We go astray from the womb speaking lies. We're born sinners and we're far from God. The Bible said in Isaiah chapter number 59 that our sins and iniquities have separated us from God and caused God not to be able to hear us. But God is a loving God. And because God is a gracious God, He made a provision that sinners could be accepted. (laughs) Amen. You know, if a fellow was righteous, somebody might die for him. Uh, uh, Peradventure of a good man, someone might uh, uh, die for him. But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. No wonder the Bible said publicans and harlots makes it into the kingdom for these religious hypocrites. Well, you ought to check that out before you get into legalism and Phariseeism. Publicans and harlots can get into the kingdom on the grounds of the grace of God. (laughs) Boy, I I, I hate to class my my people with such sinners as that. I hate to class me with being some kind of a publican, some kind of a crook. I hate to class these, these girls of the church of being a harlots or something. But I'm telling you that the publicans and harlots can make it in because of the grace of God. Amen. Because we are seen through the blood of Jesus. That's the difference. You see, once you come into the and under the blood of Jesus Christ, there's a difference made in your life. There's a change come. It redeems you, and not only redeems you, but it regenerates you and gives you a desire not to fellowship with that same crowd you used to fellowship with. Because we're seen through the blood, we're counted as having wisdom, all the wisdom that we need. We're counted as having sanctification. We're counted a, as having a, a redemption all through the blood because it's the blood, not our works, but the grace of God that Amen. saves our soul. Amen. To the praise of His glory, not to our glory at all. And some people think, well, I'm accepted because I praise God. Well, that's good to praise God, but I don't get you accepted. Amen. Some people say, well, I'm, th- I'm accepted because I pray. Well, it's good that you pray, but that don't get you accepted. Amen. There are people that says, well, I'm a holy person. Well, it's good. You ought to be holy, but that don't get you accepted. Yeah. Uh, you say, well, I, I know that I'm accepted because I had some kind of an experience years ago. Well, I appreciate your experience, but your experience doesn't get you accepted. Well, what gets me accepted, preacher? The blood of Jesus is the only thing that will ever get you accepted in the kingdom of God. Have you ever been to Jesus and said, Lord, I'm a sinner deserving of hell. Would you receive me? If you haven't, regardless of how religious you are, regardless of how much church you attend, you're not accepted. You can say, Joe sent me. Joe ain't got any any pull. I think uh, if you look at that verse, it says half made us accepted. It's not we're waiting to look and see if we're going to be accepted. But already we're accepted. The promise is as rock solid as God's throne. The promise is as rock solid as the fact that God's son Jesus died in our place. 
that he resurrected and just as sure as he died and rose again, those that be on him will be accepted by God. I know that hurts a lot of people's feelings because we're so works oriented with we ought to see something, I ought to feel something, I ought to do something. But the promise is you put your faith in the blood of Jesus and God will accept you. Predestined to accept you. You put your faith in his blood. You and I were once lost in sin. We were once rebels against God and under the curse of death and unworthy to call on God's name. But we've been taken out of that world of condemnation and given a place at the table. Hallelujah. I think about uh, uh, whenever David uh, uh, was on the throne and secure he said, is there any of the house of Saul that I might show some kindness uh, for Jonathan's sake? Uh, and he said, yes, said I know one. Uh, he lives way over there in Witcher Creek, up a holler far as you can get in an old shack. Nobody cares about him. Don't even, don't even go up there to see him. David said, go get him. Yeah. Amen. And so uh, uh, the servant uh, uh, went out there and he got a hold of old Mephibosheth. Yeah, said, the king won't see you. Yeah. Amen. When they brought him in there, can you imagine how trembling he must have been? How nervous he must have been. The king is sent. For, I've got an audience with the king, and I know that I'm in a family that's at war with the king. But when he come in there, rather than finding the sword against him, David said, oh, I want you to put him up at the table. And when you put him up there at the table, you couldn't tell his crib. <laughs> whenever, whenever God uh, took me uh, unable to walk uh, and he scooted me under his table, and you can't even tell I'm a cripple, thank God, uh, because I'm, I'm accepted, do you hear me? I'm accepted in the beloved. I think Mephibosheth uh, was shouting the praises, accepted in the beloved. Amen. Amen. In Genesis chapter 4, we find two boys that, that come to worship God. Uh, an incident about actually the first worship service that you run into there in the pages of Scripture. Uh, and then uh, uh, there was uh, two boys that came. Abel brought his blood of the little lamb and, and Cain uh, brought the fruit of the ground. Am I telling it right? And God called an interview with Cain. And he said something like this, uh, if you'll do well, you'll be accepted. Yeah, right. Amen. If, 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 you, if you're not accepted, if you don't do well, you'll not be accepted. You keep bringing something that's cursed. You see, when he brought the fruit of the ground, God had said cursed is the ground for Adam's sake. When he was bringing the fruit of the ground, then he was bringing something that God wouldn't accept that day and God won't accept today and God will never accept a cursed offering that you bring to him. And listen, he said, if you, if you don't do well in sin, life at the door. That's an interesting thing. I've read a whole lot of people uh, 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 talks about that. Uh, uh, but I want to say this. Uh, the rules is not complicated. You do what God says, you'll be accepted. You don't do what God told you, and you'll not be accepted. That's the way it is. Cain is trusted in something that is already cursed. Cain type of religion will never gain acceptance. If you think you can gain acceptance with God because of some personal thing that you did, you'll never be accepted. How hard would it have been for him to go over there to his brother and said, Hey man, would you let me have a lamb? I'll pay you back. Just let me have a lamb. Uh, uh, how hard would that have been? Saved people are generous people, aren't they? Won't saved people give you? Won't they try to help you? Don't you think that Abel would have tried to help him? He said, All you need is a lamb, uh, and I got a lamb. I, I, I won't give you this four points about how to be accepted. Number one, you have to understand that you're in need. Amen. As long as we got that self-righteous attitude, Amen. 
As long as we think we're better than everybody else, as long as we think we don't need anything, we'll never be accepted. But whenever you come and confess your need, and you not only need to confess your need, but number two, you need to understand that anything that brings any atonement has got to be something besides you. You can't bring it. You can't do it. It's something beside you. It's outside of you. You do not have. You cannot save yourself, no matter how hard you try. It's real easy. Just reach down and get hold of your boots and pull yourself off the ground. You say, "I can't do it." I know why you can't do it, because God's law won't allow you to do that. You've got to be a, a confession of need, and then you've got to say, uh, somebody besides me has got to make the atonement. And then, when you realize that atonement was made by somebody besides you, then you put your faith in that atonement. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Point number four, accept it. That's the magic button there, when you put your faith in the atonement. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ went to a lot of trouble to save you. The Lord Jesus went to a lot of heartache, a lot of suffering, physical suffering, emotional suffering, mental suffering, spiritual suffering. He did a lot of suffering to save you. Amen. If you'll put your faith that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture, was buried in the third day, rose again, according to the Scripture, you'll be accepted. Accepted in the grace of God. In Leviticus chapter 1, about verse 4, we have how the sinners of that day could be accepted. The Bible said they would come in and they would put their hand on the head of the offering. And when they would do that, they would identify themselves and say, this sin offering is taking my place. I'm identifying with them. I'll be accepted not because I'm going to die, but because the lamb's going to die. Because the bull's going to die. You see, the goat's going to die. Whatever the sin offering is, it's taking my place so that, that I can go free and the innocent will have to shed his blood. Amen. Aaron was the high priest, the first high priest of Israel. And he had a, a mitre, like a crown-like thing on his head. A, a pure gold was that that uh, engraved on his forehead, there was holiness to the Lord. And he went in to, to do the business of the temple, had to make sure that he had that crown on. Exodus chapter 28 and verse 38, that mitre said he's accepted. Well, let's study that out. I think that might have been made of gold. I think that represents the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There was no dross in him. Amen. There was nothing in him that was defiling or mean. Amen. It had written right across the top of it, holiness unto the Lord. From the time that Jesus was born until the time that they took his life away holiness unto the Lord. Amen. Never made one misstep. Amen. Amen. You go to follow me, you'll see misstep after misstep. I go to follow you, I'll see where you deviate off the path. But I'm telling you, he had his face set like a flint. He knew why he was here. He knew what was going on. He knew what Calvary was all about. And he had that one goal and that one aim in mind. And never ever did he, from the time he started and the time he finished, he never made a misstep. Several times God uttered from heaven, this is my beloved son. Amen. Hear him. He's the one that's doing right. I find no fault in him, Pilate said. Amen. Amen. Pure gold is Jesus. Holiness to the Lord is Jesus. But then he walked on the earth, earthly walk. That's the high priest. And he was wearing that purpose. He was wearing that purpose that he might be accepted in the beloved. And he'd walk in that. Right into the presence of God. Am I telling it right? Amen. 
there on that day of atonement, he walked right in through the veil, right in behind the curtain, take that blood and sprinkle that blood seven times before the altar there of the mercy seat. And then he would come back out and he'd say, folks, not only was I accepted in there, but you guys have been accepted too. For a whole year, the atonement is made. For a whole year, you'll be accepted in the beloved. I'm glad I got a high priest that walked in there and dread the blood on the altar in heaven and he didn't come back and say, I've got a yearly redemption for you. He came back and said, I've got eternal redemption. I'm not like the old Aaronic priest. I'm a priest that can save you and save you forever. Jesus is holy. Well, when we're in the beloved, so are we. I would ask somebody how how righteous would you have to be to get to heaven? If we had a scale there, you know, uh, one to a hundred, one to ten, and and you made it ninety nine percent, would you get in? I'm thinking if you was up on top of the Empire State Building, going to jump to another building, and you made it ninety nine percent. Jesus was 100%. And because he's 100%, if I'm in him, I'm 100%. I don't look like 100%. Amen. I don't look like the holiest thing that ever lived, but I'm telling you I am because I am in Jesus Christ. Jesus was spotless. And if he was spotless and I'm in him, then I'm spotless too. Man, that ought to have somebody shouting today. Jesus was holy and I'm holy. Jesus was spotless and I'm spotless. Jesus was pure and I'm pure. And you know, you'll, you'll say, oh, preacher, I saw you staggering in Kroger's or whatever. <laughs> I, I better clarify that. That birdie goes what caused me to stagger. <laughs> but, uh, but what I'm saying is uh, uh, that, that if, I wa- if I was impure, and I come to him, I am purified. Yeah. I like this. Jesus was God's delight. Amen. God was absolutely happy with him. Amen. And Amen. he's happy with me yeah. if I am in the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. He is the object of God's delight. These girls sing a song. He loves me like I was his only child. And he does. He loves me just like I was his only child. The Bible said Jesus was his only begotten son. And me being in Jesus, that means I'm an only child. Can you hear me there? Because I'm in him, I'm accepted in the beloved. He lives forever. And because he lives forever, amen, I'm accepted to live forever. The alternatives are so Terrible. I just, I just can't I- imagine that anybody that wouldn't want to be accepted from the Lord. I, ju- I just can't imagine that. But there are people. You see, God doesn't have any grandchildren. There are people that come to church, sit in the church, raise in the church, die in their sin, and are tormented in hell. That's so sad. I was reading one time about a man that, that had lost his soul and, and was granted 24 hours to visit his old home place. And uh, he got there just about uh, twilight when the sun was setting and he walked up into the little, the little country house where he grew up. The gate there and he looked and he could see himself but he was 16 years old. And he looked there at that night and he he saw his daddy who had taken him to church and who had tried to train him right. And that night in the twilight, he asked him about the farm. He said, uh, is the hay need mowed? Ask about the animals. Sure is pretty. I'm glad to see the old home place. 
But his daddy said, yes, at the home place is doing well. But I'd give every animal I got. I'd give every wheat field I got. I could just know my boy was going to get to go to heaven. He said uh, through the tears in his in his dad's eyes, "Son, would you accept Jesus today? Today may be the last day that you'll ever have a chance to receive Him." Well, the soul said, uh, "I can't uh, stand that. I got to get out of here." So he started out to go in the home place. There by the fireplace, he saw his mother knelt in prayer. Years rolled by. He saw the bed where mama died, where he knelt at her knee, but years gone by. And he ran out of the house, and he ran down the road. And he heard the singing coming from the old country church. Long since had shut down and the doors were closed, locked up. Nobody there singing anymore. But it seemed that in his journey he, he saw the old preacher that had pleaded with him in the t- at the times past. He saw the pew where his family sat together. He heard the choir sing. What a friend we have in Jesus. Rock of ages, cleft for me. The old preacher announced his text. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. I want to tell you how you can be accepted in the beloved. Altar call. Here they come, boys and girls. Y'all remember when they used to do that? Here they come. I'd love to go back sometime. But the truth of the matter is, I can't turn back time. The truth of the matter is, I died without receiving Jesus. And because of that, I'm not accepted in the beloved. The wild shrieks of the weeping and the wailing of the gnashing of the teeth of the dead. As he leaves, goes back to his long home in eternity. And I'd give everything I own if I could just have one more chance to be accepted in the beloved. Have you been accepted tonight? Amen. If you have, all's well. If you have not, hell's your home. Let's bow for prayer. There's a place dear to me where I'm longing to be with my friends I've been adopted. at the old country my church. I'm an heir. There with mother we went and our Sundays were spent in prayer at the old country church. Precious years of memory. Oh, what joy they bring to me. How I long once more to be with my friends at the old country church. Just a small country boy, how my heart beat with joy as I prayed in the old country church. There the Savior above, through his wonderful love, saved my soul in the old country church. Precious years of memory. Amen. Oh, what joy they bring to me. How I long once more to be. With my friends at the old country church. I wish that today the people would pray as they did in that old country church. 
If we'd only confess, Jesus surely would bless as he did in the old country church. Precious years of memory, oh, what joy they bring to me. How I long once more to be with my friends at the old country church. Amen. You remember? Yeah. I do too.